How You Can Actually Change, Part 2. Welcome to The Hopefulist with me, Wendy McClure. This is where we turn those nasty, negative thoughts into positive and work toward a happy, fulfilled life. Now, let's get started. Welcome and thank you for joining me here on The Hopefulist. Well, the cooler weather is here. The temperatures have dropped. And, you know, it's not, it's not all that terrible. I got to tell you, we had five straight days of wind-driven rain, which caused a lot of flooding in my area. It was depressing. It made me miserable. <laughs> so I will take any day without wind-driven rain and flooding <laughs> from this point on. It made me appreciate any weather condition except for wind-driven rain. Whew. I didn't feel like it was ever going to stop raining. I realized that I will never be able to live in Seattle. Oh, my goodness. I don't know how those people put up with all that rain. Now, we didn't get a lot of rain over the summer. We were pretty lucky in the sense that, you know, it didn't really curtail many much of our plans uh, we were also moving into a drought situation because of the lack of rain no longer a problem we are not in a drought situation anymore but I sometimes wonder was it was it payback was it was like well we gave you a really good summer so take that I don't know it's all it all pans out in the end it all works out in the end right uh, so while I was So miserable with all of that rain, all of that wind, and all of that water. Our entire yard was completely flooded, flooded front and back. It made me think of what I could appreciate about the situation. And I put a post up on social media about this, and I hope you got a chance to see it. Uh, One of the things that I was grateful for was the fact that I had a nice, safe home that is raised four feet off the ground to protect us from flooding conditions. I was grateful for the fact that I didn't have to leave the house during that mess because I work from home. I was grateful that I had plenty of food in the fridge, once again, not having to leave the house. I was grateful for that one tiny little spot in the back of the driveway that wasn't completely flooded over where Tucker could do her potty, her potty job, her pottying, however you want to say it. Um, so, yeah, it was, uh, it was a rough couple of days. But if you look really hard, you can find some good in the situation. We are going on vacation soon. We are going to the beautiful Outer Banks of North Carolina. I have been there many times. It is a beautiful place. Going to be in a house this year that I have not stayed at before, so um, I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to be with my family, my siblings, and their spouses, and we have a lot of food and eating planned. A lot of eating planned, a lot of drinking planned, a lot of fun to be had. I have, I just heard recently about keeping relationships fresh and talking about date night. And one of the things that was suggested was to look up this list of, you know, questions to start any conversation. And I haven't looked them up yet, but um, the person who was speaking about this said that, you know, you can find a list of like 250 questions Um, that will start any conversation up on the internet and that he thought it was a good idea to do this for date night. Well, I think it's a good idea to do it on family vacation. (laughs) So I'm going to look up that list and it's almost like a little bit of, you know, what do you really think about stuff? Let's get down deep into the brain and see how things are working in there. Uh, I think it'll be kind of fun. So 
We're very much looking forward to that. I have been watching the weather there like a hawk. And so far, looking good. Looking pretty good. It's not not the warmest, but, you know, it's October. It's not supposed to be super warm, even though it's typically a little warmer down in North Carolina than it is up here in uh, New Jersey. But so far, I'm loving what I'm saying. So let's let's pray that the forecast doesn't change too much in the next week uh, before we actually trek down to the Outer Banks and uh, hopefully have a humdinger of a good time. Why did I just say humdinger? I have no idea. It just came out of nowhere. The quote of the day today, our thoughts are linked to the invisible energy that makes up all that is. And they help mold it into that which we experience on the physical plane. And here, this is where I got it. Here's the real humdinger. I knew I must have just seen it somewhere. Universal intelligence and your thoughts are basically the same force. Just as the water droplet that lands in the ocean is part of the whole sea, so your thoughts exist as part of universal, uh, excuse me, universal intelligence. In other words, you are one powerful badass. So... Your thoughts are linked to the energy that makes up the world around you. Keep that in mind and never, ever forget it because it's what's going to get you what you want in this life. We are talking about how to make real change in your life. Part two is about appreciation. Appreciate what you have. We talk about this all the time. I found a fantastic article on Forbes about this. And it starts out with, the pandemic has made us weary. And while it might be cathartic to make a list of all all we've lost, all we're tired of, and all we want to leave behind, expressing gratitude is actually a better idea. Gratitude is a powerful, positive force, far from a fluffy or frivolous concept as we are still emboldened to believe. It has real impact on physical health, emotional well-being, motivation, engagement, and belonging. And here is why gratitude is good and how to bring more gratitude into your day. Gratitude is the root of happiness. It tends to focus you on what you have and replace a sense of what you might be lacking. So you focus on what you have instead of what you don't have. According to some philosophers, you can't feel both grateful and unhappy. So when your your mind focuses on all you are thankful for, you are more likely to feel joy. In addition... When you are more grateful, you tend to focus on the present, appreciating right now. And this can reduce a sense of yearning or anxiety about the future. In fact, what you're grateful for today may be something you hoped for yesterday. In addition, by focusing on all you have, you perceive those elements of your life as growing larger Hence, gratitude gives you a feeling of fullness, that what you have is enough, and this is associated with contentment. Now, gratitude is also a gateway emotion of sorts. Philosophers over the years have suggested it's the greatest virtue because it leads to so many others. For example, appreciation of someone can grow into love. Gratitude for what you have can lead to greater satisfaction, and loving your work can lead to improved performance. You get it? Gratitude is also really good for your relationships and the community of which you're a part. Specifically, gratitude can foster friendships. A study at the University of New South Wales found that when people express appreciation, Others perceive that they can form a constructive relationship with them. 
and tend to invest and contribute to connecting. In addition, when people received more expressions of gratitude at work, they reported better sleep, fewer headaches, healthier eating, and more satisfaction with their jobs. Expressing gratitude tends to spread positive feelings. You feel good about something, and your appreciation makes someone else feel good as well, which contributes to an emotional economy, a give and take of feelings, which fosters a positivity, excuse me, a positive ethos of the entire group. Expressing gratitude can also create the conditions for awe and flow. These experiences are more likely when you're lifted out of yourself. In fact, neuroscience research highlighted in the happiness hypothesis by Jonathan Haidt finds experiences of awe and flow are associated with reduction in activity in the parts of the brain which are vigilant and self-focused. So being thankful can liberate you from a preoccupation with yourself and focus you more on the bigger picture, which tends to predict positive experiences. Okay, so we're talking about appreciation. How will this help you to change? I find that this was the key to my transformation. You've heard me talk about a gratitude journal for more than three years now. And do you know why I put so much emphasis on it? Because it is the number one thing that changed me from a pessimist to the hopefulist. And I had done a gratitude journal for years before it made a difference in my life. And I'm going to tell you the difference. For the first couple of years that I did it, I did it specifically because I was told it would make my life better. And I didn't do it right. I did it as a to-do list. I didn't put any real thought or effort into it. What I did was... Make it something to just check off. Another chore to be done, which made me not want to do it, which made me rush through it even more. And then I started doing it in a way that actually increased my gratitude. Now when I sit down to write down my five things each day that I'm grateful for, take my time about it. And I got to tell you, there are times still that I, I search for those fourth and fifth things. It takes me a while to, to come up with it. And I don't mind putting in at that extra time because it's so worth it. Because what writing things down that you are grateful for does is one It has you looking for positive experiences throughout the day. And it has you searching for them as you go to write them down. So you're reliving that positive experience as you write it down. And just like this article was saying, the more you focus on the positive that you have in life, that's the more that you're going to see. If you tend to uh, to focus on the negative in your life, you're going to see more of the negative. So it's the same exact thing with gratitude and positivity. Focus on the positive. Focus on what you have instead of what you don't have. Now, I'm going to be honest. I don't do my gratitude journal every day. I don't. There's days that I skip it. I I don't often do it on the weekends. But I try to start every single weekday with writing down five things that I am grateful for. And I think that was the main thing. In fact, I know it was the main thing that changed my thinking, that made me a happier person. So learn to appreciate more. Appreciate What you actually have, because a lot of what you have now 
is what you have wished for in the past. And don't ever forget that. Don't ever forget the fact that all you have now, all of the things that you are taking for granted is something that you once wished for and worked for and wanted so badly. So now that you have it, don't just take it for granted. Appreciate it. Love up on it. Remember the joy that it brings you and make sure to feel a little bit of that joy every single day. When it comes to appreciation, it doesn't mean you can't want more. It doesn't mean that you are going not going to look ahead and say, okay, well, I have this great house, but I would like also another house in Florida, at the Jersey Shore, in Hawaii. Hey, let's go for it. Let's put those goals and ambitions out there. That is fine. But you can't do that at the same time that you're bashing what you already have. If you're not happy with what you already have, it's going to be so much harder for you to achieve more. You can't shame yourself into submission. I say this all the time. You can't shame yourself into submission. If you don't like the house that you live in, you're not going to get very far. You have to find the things about that house that you love. Concentrate on those things while working toward getting another house where you want to be that looks the way that it looks in your mind. But you can't be hating on something while trying to get something better. And it took me a long time to get this concept. I remember reading about that when I was young. If you hate your car, you'll never get a better car. Well, at the time, I had a bright yellow Ford Pinto. And I'm like, I don't love this car. I hate this car. How am I supposed to love this car? Well, I had a car. You know, we live in an area, we, I grew up in an area where most people had cars, but just because that was my experience doesn't mean that it was everyone's experience. There were a lot of people in the country that didn't have access to cars, let alone the world. So I could have been grateful just for the fact that I had a car and it got me where I wanted to go. It also had, you know, heat. There was most parts of it working. Was it pretty? Oh, no. But I had this cool little bumper sticker that I just loved. It said, if you're rich, I'm single. And it was a joke. Don't get on me about it. It was a joke. But I, I liked it. Every time I was on the back of the car, every single time I walked to my car, I saw it. I got a little chuckle out of it. These are some of the things that I should have loved about my car. Because you know what would have been worse than my bright yellow Pinto? Taking the bus or walking or having to ride my bike. My husband at one time didn't have a car when he was, I, I think he was out of high school. He didn't have a car. He had to ride his bike everywhere. I was never in that situation. But yet I still hated my car. I'm sure he would have loved to have had my car. So remember to appreciate what you have while striving for more. And don't fall into toxic positivity. And, you know, I really do not like that term. And I hesitated to use it. But let me explain to you what I mean when I say po uh, toxic positivity in this sense. There's a woman I follow on social media, Lisa Bilyeu. And she has a book called Radical Acceptance, and it's really, really good if you would like to check it out. But she had fallen into this trap of what she calls toxic positivity. Uh, she was married. She was running a company. In fact, her and her husband um, founded Quest. Are you familiar with the health bars, Quest bars? Her and her husband founded that company, um, and she had no intention of ever running a company. But they, she kind of got pushed into it, and every time she felt 
unsettled. Every time she felt stuck or like she wasn't doing what she was supposed to be doing, she would kind of come at herself with like, hey, what are you doing? You're married to a great man. You got lots of money coming in. You're kicking it when it comes to business. Who are you to sit here and say that you're not satisfied? And she said she did this for years. She talked herself down for years. And then she finally realized that there was just more that she wanted to do. It's not that she wasn't appreciative of what she had. This is exactly what we're talking about. She was appreciative of what she had. That doesn't mean you can't go for more or different things in your life. It's the concept of it's good enough. And if you want, it, if you want your life to be good enough, then that's fine. But I hope you don't want your life to be good enough. I hope you want your life to be great and fantastic and fulfilled and satisfying and to live every moment and feel every moment as much as you possibly can because the days are long, but the years are short. And I don't want any of us to look back and say, we could have done so much more. We could have done so much more. So there are a couple things for you to work on this week. So thank you for joining me today. I do appreciate it. I have some very exciting news. I have a brand new website. Brand new website. Woohoo! Please check it out. Hopeless.com. Um, I have... Uh, it's, it's totally revamped. Totally revamped. And let me know what you think of it. I would love to hear your feedback, e even if it's negative feedback. Whatever you want to tell me, please let me know. The hopefulest one at gmail.com. You can actually message me through the website if you so choose. You can sign up for my email list. There's a number of services there that I offer that you can take advantage of. So I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Please, if you like this episode, share it with your friends. Leave me a review on the platform that you listen. Uh, leaving reviews really helps to get the podcast out to more people. So thank you so much for listening and joining me today. And I want you to go on out there and live life, feel life to the fullest. You be badass. I'm cheering you on. Thank you for listening to The Hopefulist. Now, don't you feel good? Make sure you come back next week. See you then.